You know what happens, Crisis and Elzai, when you make an album together? You know what happens when you use the name Jericho in the title? Huh? You know what happens? You just made the list! What's going on everybody? It's the granddad of Granddad Wooly and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews Hip Hop Data. We got an album review today. We're going to talk about the brand new album that just fucking dropped. Well, it didn't just fucking drop. It's been a few days. I was a little late on the shit. I've been busy, y'all. I've been doing a lot of shit. A lot of good shit, but doing a lot of shit. But I told y'all I got y'all on this joint. I've been waiting for this to drop ever since it's announced. And now it's finally here. It's on that collabo thing. You know, that's a big thing this year with the collabs and shit. And this is the first big one that we getting. So let's talk about it. These motherfuckers are back. They dropped the new shit. They own some Jericho Jackson shit. Who the fuck is that? Is that like a lost member of the Jackson 5 that just didn't make it or wanted to rap? I don't fucking know. You're gonna have to look that nigga up or they just make him up. I don't fuck. Talking about the new album from Crisis and Elzai entitled Crisis and Elzai are Jericho Jackson. Whoever the fuck that nigga is. For those who don't know, Crisis is a very dope producer out of North Carolina. He's a member of the Soul Council, spearheaded by Ninth Wonder and Jamla Records. He's been doing this thing for many years. He's got production credits with Rap City, to Lil Brother, to Sean Price R.I.P., and a lot of other shit in between. And he's just a dope ass producer. Same thing goes for Elzai, who is a very dope MC out of Detroit. He used to be a member of Slum Village. He broke off and went solo. He's got a couple notable projects under his name, like Elmatic, which is his version of Illmatic. It's really dope. Also, his last album, Left. Poison was one of my favorites of that year. I think it dropped in 2016, but he's been doing his thing. So now they're coming together to do a collaboration album, which I didn't expect, but makes perfect sense if you think about it, because Crisis's production and Elzai's lyrics and flow would just fit so well together. I believe it would, so now I guess we're going to find that out right fucking now. So now let's see if Jericho Jackson is a good-ass album that's worthy of Jericho Jackson being a member of the Jackson 5 and making it to Jackson 6. I think that nigga exists. They just don't want, they want to sweep him under the rug for some reason. Thank you, you two, for bringing him to the light, because I think he's a real motherfucker. Maybe not. Maybe not. Or will this album just be as whack and as obscure as this motherfucker here, because nobody knows who the fuck he is, because he's probably whack as shit. We're going to see. We're going to fucking see. Let's talk about the shit. Now, when I first popped in this album and tuned into the production, which is all done by Crisis, of course, I realized that he went with a really low-key and laid-back sound with his production, but still gives us that same soulful, sample-based, boom-bap feel that we like to get from him. But Crisis also gives these beats sort of like a dark undertone to him. Not like sinister dark, but just really just like, like, it's just like a gray area type dark where it's like, it's not happy, but it's not like fucking sad at the same time. It's like in that nice little middle ground, but it just sounds good, especially for Elzai's content and what he's talking about. And I'm not gonna lie, upon first listen, I really wasn't too hyped with the production. Not really the beats itself, but just the whole overall sound of the album because it was so low key. But as I listened to it more and more and really got the point of the production when it came to Elzai as far as his rhyming, it made perfect sense, it clicked, and the beats actually grew on me and I actually ended up liking every beat on here in some way shape or form and the production on here is absolutely phenomenal i get it now crisis it took a minute for me nigga but i got the shit you did your damn thing a lot of beats and when it comes to elzai if you've never heard elzai rap before you are in for a treat because this motherfucker's got bars he's got wordplay he's got storytelling ability he's the total package when it comes to being an mc and on here he is not skipping on any of that he has got bar after bar line after line just concept after concept but also he's really talking about himself a lot of self-reflection on here and with lead poison he really was going through his depressive state and on this album he seems to be coming out of that a little bit in a way but still has those lingering moments on songs like overthink or listen or friends but then he has really cool conceptual songs like cuffing season which ain't about relationships it's about the cops cuffing niggas all day every day it ain't just one season l's ass all year you know that shit nigga and also songs like 17 as well as others and there's a lot of great moments on this album and every song on here has its own character its own personality has something that you can take away from it but at the same time you can tell it always has a little piece of l's eye within himself in the song which i think is really dope and the album itself isn't very long it's only 38 minutes long and there's really no features on here except for amber navron am i saying your name right navron i think it's amber navron i hope i'm not fucking your name up because you can sing your ass off i love your voice but other than that it's elza and crisis taking everything on themselves and it works out that way because we get to hear the great crisis production we get to hear the great lyrics and bars from elza this is the official introduction of jericho jackson that's what we should get i'm glad that we didn't get any other mcs coming in maybe on the next album 
doing, but it's good to hear that we got just them for the most part, and it worked out well because we get to see their chemistry, how they work well together, how they do an album together, and it just sounds really good. Now, you know I gotta give my top five tracks, y'all, and this was hard as hell, y'all, because honestly, I love every song on here. There's only 10 songs on the entire album, Everyone has its own character or personality or just charm to it that makes you want to go back and listen to it again and again. But I had to whittle down five songs that I thought were the best, but I'm not going to lie. The other ones could have made it any day of the week, honestly, y'all. But I got, so I got, hold on, I got Cuffin' Season, 17, Friends, uh, Listen, and Thank You. Okay, so let's go back up. So we got... Cuffin' Season, that's actually the fourth song on the album, and I love this song because it's very conceptual. It's not talking about Cuffin' Season like relationships and shit. I think that shit just ended, but we're talking about the year-long Cuffin' Season of cops locking motherfuckers up for any and everything. So as Elza saying, yo, you gotta watch out for the cops, watch out for Popo, watch out for the Flatfoots because they're trying to lock niggas up left and right, and you don't want to be next, so make sure you don't get caught slipping. But it's a dope song, dope beat by Crisis. Love the concept of it. Really stuck out to me when I first heard it. And I just love how he kind of flipped that whole cuffing season aspect to it and gave it a new meaning. Really dope. Check it out. The next song, 17, is a dope storytelling song, which pretty much talks about a young kid who was at the age of 17 is doing life in the streets. But it's pretty much talking about how he just started getting into the street life before. He was just a regular kid doing regular teenage shit. He decides to get into the street life because he thinks it's cool. And then shit goes wrong. Shit starts to go down. And he realizes that he really ain't built for this life, but it's too late because he's already deep in the shit. And now he's got to find a way to sort of get back to where he was before and hopefully by the time he hits 18 he's learned his lesson and he becomes more mature and a grown-up and it's kind of like talking about that coming of age story where it's pretty much like okay you're going from that transition from a kid or a teenager into an actual adult and you got to make the choice of how you want to conduct your life and some people do it in smart ways and some people do it in not so smart ways but whatever decision you do you have to deal with those consequences and that's what this song is about and I think it's really dope that Elza can illustrate that so well beat on here is great everything on here works out well love the story dope track the next song friends is so fucking dope it's probably one of my favorite songs on the album it's in the top three honestly y'all the beat on there i love the little beat that goes that's just so fucking dope crisis shit and when it comes to elzai the way that he flipped the whole friend aspect even he made the fucking word an acronym of fake relationships involving enemies needing disguises Shit, that's fucking dope, Elzai. And then he's just talking about how he needs real friends. Like, he needs a friend to be there not only when he's at the height of the highest, but also when he's at the lowest of lows. And he just knows that some people, some so-called friends, aren't going to be there if it's not convenient for them, which is kind of fucked up, but it's actually kind of true because it happens all the time in real life. So it's a dope song. Another song where Elzai's pretty much being more personal with himself, but also a song that he's pretty much saying, yo, he needs fucking friends. Like, I'll be your friend, Elzai. Shit, I mean, what I got to do? Can we get on a song together? Do an album? I don't know. Listen, what's the prerequisite? Don't make me do extra shit. I mean, because I'm, I'm lazy. I'm a terrible friend already. Fuck. The next song, Listen, featuring Amber and Ryan, was actually a song that at first I was kind of put off by. First of all, I'm going to say the beat on here I love. It's probably one of my favorite beats on here. It's smooth, laid back, jazzy with some nice horns. Crisis, you killed the beat. Amber Navron, your fucking hook is beautiful. Your voice sounds angelic, like a cloud is on a cloud with an angel, and the clouds are just, it's clouds and shit. It's uh, soft and it's beautiful. It sounds good. But here's the thing with Elzai. When I first heard this nigga rap, he sounded so offbeat. Like, his, the way his flow was was so counterintuitive to the beat. I was like, this nigga's rapping offbeat as fuck. And at first, I was kind of put off by it. But after I listened to it a few more times, I got what Elzai was doing. And I'm like, this motherfucker's genius. He purposely rapped offbeat to be on beat to be offbeat. Because that's how he feels in life, because he feels offbeat because he wants someone to really connect with them and just vibe with them on a relationship level. It's sort of like the love song, but he's just saying like he needs to have somebody just, you know, listen to him. Just listen to how he's just being. And I think that's what it was. I may be overthinking the shit, haha, <laughs> pun intended, but I'm just saying it's a dope song. And the fact that he was able to just rap off beat, but still be on beat, and then kind of pick it up in the second half of the verse, really dope. I love it. Check it out. And the last song, Thank You, which is pretty much the last song on the album, is really just Elzai saying thank you to everybody who stuck with them through the ups and the downs, through the good and the bad, from personal people to the fans and everything in between. And it's just pretty much him just saying, like, yo, I know it's been some shit. I know I've been through some things. I know I've kind of, like, let y'all down here and there maybe. But I want you to know that I do appreciate you. I don't want to say thank you. And I'm going to continue to keep persevering and keep going and make things better and better. And Jericho Jackson is the first step to that. And we appreciate that, Elzai, because you gave us a great album. You worked it with a great producer. And it gave us a great result. And I just, I mean, I can't wait to hear more. So thank you, nigga. 
Thank you. And that's my top five, y'all. But honestly, y'all, this album is fucking fantastic. Every song on here is worth mentioning. I wish I could just, you know, give it a top. I could have gave it a top 10, but I've been here all day talking about it. But every song on here is dope. Every aspect of it. I mean, overthinking is dope. Uh, Brigettes is dope. Uh, fuck. I mean, just uh, self-made. The single was dope. Everything on here. Listen to the whole project. The excerpts, the skits, the interludes in between that builds to each song makes the album just really sound seamless and just comes together well. Everything on here is just done so well. It's not too long. It's a nice size, a nice length. It gets you in, gets you out. And it's just a great collaboration between two highly talented individuals who came together and made a great album. I got nothing else good to say about it. I got nothing bad to say about it either. Shit's dope. You gotta listen to it. So my final a verdict. I'm not saying that Crisis and Elzai, who are Jericho Jackson, made a great collaboration album and brought the best of each other out with this project. All I'm saying is that the beats on here are great. Even though they're kind of low key and it takes a while for you to get used to, Crisis gave a perfect set of instrumentals for Elzai to work on and do his damn thing, and I really appreciate it. And Elzai himself gave lyric after lyric, bar after bar, and so many quotables. I don't even want to bother because I could be doing it all day, but he is spitting his ass off. Great storytelling, great concepts, and it just sounds great, and everything on here is just on point. I mean, it's just good. It's a fucking good-ass album, a great-ass album, and you got to listen to this shit right now if you're a fan of either one. Or if you've never heard of either of these guys, check this out. You will be a fan, definitely. But all i got to say is that for me, Crisis and Elza, who are Jericho Jackson, is 100% granddad approved. Go listen to this album. Support this album. Cop it. Listen to it. 150 times at least because you will just get more and more out of it as you listen to it and I just can't wait to hear it more and I can't wait to hear Jericho Jackson too because I know it's going to be that fire. But I got nothing more to say. Crisis, Elzai, Jericho Jackson is granddad approved. So go listen to the shit right fucking now. Flip it. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Crisis, Elzai, Jericho Jackson. If you heard it, if you have not heard it, you fucking up. Get it in your life. It's dope, especially if you like that soulful boom bap bar heavy lyrical rhyme shit that's just dope listen to it because this is up your alley and even if you don't like that shit still listen to it because it's something that you can get out of this album because it's very deep introspective very personal and a lot of good qualities to it listen to it it's fire previous videos on the size was my latest single check that out show us some love and as always twitter facebook soundcloud instagram links in the description below and subscribe button on the screen button below will reviews twice a week as well as gaming channel all the other segments let's talk about the shit everything in the description below show that some love and i got nothing more to say so until next time i'll take my leave granddaughter crisis Elza, they Jericho Jackson. It's the dope fucking album, y'all. But who the fuck is Jericho Jackson? I'm a, yo, I'm gonna find out who the fuck he is. I don't give a fuck if Google don't know. I'm gonna find out because he's somebody. If not, he this nigga and he is dope. I'm out of here.